Welcome to our lecture online, and here's our next example of how to take a circuit like this, a rather complicated looking circuit, and find the equivalent resistance. So the idea here again is to find our equivalent. And we're going to do that again by, by reducing the complexity of this circuit step by step so we can slowly condense it down to a single equivalent resistance. But first, before we do that, we have to realize, wow, this looks kind of strange back here. Notice that we have all these pieces of the circuit come together in a single point. And it makes it a little bit complicated as to how we want to reduce that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the left right there. I'm going to take this single portion right here and turn this into a single junction. And we'll have something coming out of that. And then I'll combine this with the other two right there and read out the circuit just a little bit to make it look a little bit easier to deal with. All right, so again, we start from A. So the circuit now will look something like this. So we start from A. We have the two resistors right there. So one resistor here, one resistor there. They're both 10 ohm resistors. They come together. The circuit continues up here. We have a 2 ohm resistor and a 3 ohm resistor, 2 and 3. Then this splits up into three branches. So we have the top branch that has those two 10 ohm resistors. So that's a 10 and that's a 10. And notice down here we have a 5 ohm resistor. And then this branches up into two 10 ohm resistors. Now I'm going to write them like this. So we'll take the two 10 ohm resistor, one here, one there, make them combine again like that. That is the same thing as what I had here. What I have in the green here is now going to be replaced by this junction right there. A lot easier to look at, a lot easier to deal with. And then finally, I'm going to take the end of this and those two and combine those three together into a single junction. So what I have in the red there now becomes this junction right there. Come out this way. Actually, I could probably come this way have done my 20 ohm resistor and then back to, oh, I forgot my B. There, point B right there. So what is the resistance between A and B? It's simply the equivalent of this circuit right there. This, of course, a 20 ohm resistor right there. Hmm, a lot easier to deal with. So how do we begin to simplify that? Well, I have a parallel branch right here. I can combine that and a parallel branch right there. I can combine those. Notice that they're both the same resistance, 10 ohms, 10 ohms, and 10 ohms, and 10 ohms. If you have two resistors in parallel that have the same value, the equivalent resistance will be half that value. Let me show you how that works. So our equivalent is equal to the product over the sum, which is 100 over 20, which is 5. So notice that the equivalent resistance of two Resistors in parallel, if they have the same value, simply half that value, which makes it easy. So this becomes a 5 ohm resistor, and this becomes a 5 ohm resistor. So the equivalent circuit now, we have an A and a B, A, B. So now this becomes a single 5 ohm resistor. We come up here. Notice I can also combine those two right there. Let me use a, a different color. So what I did was I combined those two. I'm going to combine those two because they're both in series, and I'm going to combine those two because they're both in parallel. So when I combine the 2 and 3 ohm resistor, that becomes a 5 ohm resistor, a single 5 ohm resistor. I have a, parallel, I have a branch here that branches out to 3. I have the 10 ohm, I have the 10 ohm, and here we had a 5 ohm resistor, and then those two combined will also become a 5 ohm resistor. And all three come back together like this. We now have a 20 ohm resistor, and so this is a 10, a 10, a 5, and a 5. Okay, things are looking up a little bit. Notice when you looked at this and go, wow, where do I start? Well, after a while, it's not so bad. Notice that this resistor right here and that resistor are in series, so we can actually combine those two and make that into a single resistor, and those two resistors are in series, we combine those two and make that into a single resistor. So when we then draw the parallel, the equivalent circuit, we get the following. Okay, this is equal to, so that becomes a single resistor. So we have A, we have B, come out here. This now becomes a 10 ohm resistor. Combine them because they're in series, so you simply add them together. Now we have a parallel branch with three resistors in each branch. Like so, and then this is still a 20 ohm resistor. So this is 20. Those still remain to be 10 and 10. 
And notice that these two combined since they're in series also turn out to be 10 ohms because you simply add them together when they're in series. All right, now we have three 10 ohm resistors in parallel. It turns out when you have three in parallel and they have the same value, the equivalent resistance will be one third that value. But if you're not sure about that, again, we can simply get it like this. Our equivalent is equal to, or I should say one over our equivalent is equal to one over the first one, plus one over the second one, plus one over the third one. So one over our equivalent is equal to three over 10, which means that our equivalent is equal to 10 divided by three, which is 3.33, which is one third the value of each one of them. So when you have three in parallel, they all have the same value. The equivalent resistance is just one third of that value. So now we have the circuit coming this way. So we have A, we have B, we have the single 10 ohm resistor right there, and those three combined will form a single resistor. This is 10, this will be 3.33, and we still have our 20 ohm resistor right there. And now we realize all we have left is just those three resistors. They're all in series. We simply have to add them into a single resistor. So now when we go over here, now we have our A and B, the terminals A and B, with just a single resistor Combine 10 plus 20 is 30, plus that is 33.33 ohms, and that will then be the equivalent resistance. Our equivalent is equal to that. And see, if you follow this standard procedure, where you first redraw it so you can make it easier to look at your circuit and find out which are in series and which are in parallel, and after that you just start combining Anytime you have any combination, like any parallel combination or any series combination, simply combine the two, make it simpler, combine the two, make it simpler, combine them, and so forth, until you have the final answer. That's how you do that.